All right, hi everybody. My name is Meredith Fusen Hill, and today we're gonna to cover the Nutrition 101 for weight loss surgery. So again, my name is Meredith. I'm your bariatric dietitian here at Prisma Health. Um, I'm here to educate you on some very bariatric specific weight loss concepts, assist you in making sustainable lifestyle changes, help problem solve some common issues you may encounter. And here I'm here to support and encourage you. So hit, here's my email, meredith.fusen Ifen Hill at prismahealth.org. After reviewing this information today, you will be able to list foods to include in your diet for weight loss, identify what needs to be avoided for weight loss, name some acceptable drink choices, explain the 10, 20, 30 rule, practice at least one mindful eating technique, and then pass the quiz with an 80% or better. So here we go. So after surgery, I get this question a lot, what can I eat? So the majority of your diet is going to be protein, 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 and vegetables. Okay, this is what you're gonna focus on, including plenty of protein and vegetables. So this is your beef, pork, chicken, turkey, bison, venison, fish, seafood, eggs, cheese, um, any kind of protein like that, but nothing that's breaded or fried. And then vegetables, fresh and frozen, even some canned vegetables of all kinds. It can be raw or cooked, it doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. Protein supplements. So this is going to be something very important. Um, first, let me kind of cover what the word supplement really means. The definition is something that completes or enhances something else when added to it. So your protein supplements are things you're going to mostly be drinking or eating to increase your protein intake, okay? So these are in addition to the food you're going to be eating. They come in different forms. Uh, the ones we usually kind of uh, mention, uh, shakes. So your protein shakes are one of the types of protein supplements. These can be ready to drink mixes, you know, already pre-bottled, ready to go, or your powdered mixes that you can put in a shaker bottle and just mix it up or blend it into a low sugar smoothie. Um, they can be protein soups or protein bars, but that's not until much later after surgery, at least six months and beyond. The criteria you're looking for, for a good protein supplement is that it's between 20 and 30 grams of protein and less than six grams of sugar per serving. Okay, so as long as it's high enough in protein, between 20 and 30 grams, and less than six grams of sugar, low in sugar, then it's a decent choice. So what will I avoid? Um, two major categories of things that you're going to avoid, your sugars and your starches. So sugars, these are things like candy, cookies, cake, donuts, pie, ice cream, milkshakes, brownies, muffins, and sugary drinks. And then also starches. So this is your bread, rice, pasta, cereal, tortillas, buns, crackers, chips, popcorn, pretzels, fries, and anything that, any food that's breaded, you know, that's gonna add starch to it. So those are the things you want to avoid. A lot of processed food, these foods come with unnecessary calories, can cause you to be uncomfortable, may cause dumping syndrome, um, and will slow your weight loss. Um, and eventually over time, if you continue to include things like this, it can um, cause weight regain. 
with your fluids. So what you drink, it's, it's very, very important that everything be sugar-free, okay? Nothing beats plain water um, or some lemon water. But if you need to add some flavor to your drinks, that's fine. Just make sure it's sugar-free. Um, and these can come in powders, like, you know, the Crystal Light packets. Um, there are a whole bunch out there. Um, powders or squirt drops, you know, where you just add a little bit um, to your water. Uh, or ready-to-drink mixes. These are like your Powerade Zero, Gatorade Zero, things like that. You can drink those, bottom line, as long as it's sugar-free and not carbonated. Carbonation is a permanent thing to avoid. You will, you will not include anything that's carbonated in your diet. This is just showing you basically, again, I'm reminding you, half protein, half vegetables. This is what you're aiming for. When you sit down to eat, what's on your plate, what's what or in your bowl, what's your protein, and what's your veggie, and then a water bottle there. So here are a few specific behaviors um, that are related to weight loss surgery. So you are not going to be able to eat and drink at the same time. You're going to separate food and fluids. And what 10, 20, 30 means is 10 minutes before you're going to eat a meal, you stop drinking. Okay, that way the, the fluid can empty and you have room for your food. Then you aim to take about 20 minutes to eat your meal. So just slowing down, taking your time in between bites, um, taking smaller bites, chewing everything until it comes to like applesauce consistency and then stopping when you feel satisfied, not full. So then when you're done with that meal, look at what time it is and wait for 30 minutes before you start drinking again, okay? In theory, it's so that the fluid doesn't push the food through your stomach too soon, leaving you feeling hungry and then overeating. But I'll tell you, usually it doesn't even get to that point. Um, if you drink too soon after a meal, it's just all coming back up. So, um, so spacing out your food and your fluids. So three times a day, there will be a one hour time period then where you won't be drinking anything. Okay, so it's really important then to stay on top of your fluids um, to stay hydrated by taking very frequent small sips of fluid. Okay, you can't just gulp a bottle of water like you can now um, if you start feeling really thirsty. So you have to spread it out throughout the day. Like I mentioned, carbonation is out for good. So sodas, um, whether it's diet or regular, um, sparkling waters, beer, champagne, carbonation is out. You are going to aim for a minimum of 64 ounces of total fluid every day okay so that's eight eight ounce servings of fluid uh like i mentioned small sips of um fluid throughout the day no straws um, especially early on you want to avoid straws because it can introduce air into your stomach and um, be uncomfortable and after surgery you are going to eat according to the clock, okay? You are gonna eat on a regular routine meal schedule. You can't skip meals. You can't judge your, you know, your hunger or whether or not you're gonna eat based on how hungry you feel. You're probably not going to have an appetite, okay? But you still need to eat something so you can nourish your body and lose weight. So when it comes time for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or your two protein shakes as your snacks, stick to that. You know, it's, it's a very fine line between telling you to eat when you don't feel hungry, you know, versus listening to your, your hunger hormones, your hunger cues. Um, but you can't, you can't rely on that. So just try to eat a little something. You don't have to eat a full meal. Take a few bites if, if it 
kind of triggers like, okay, I can, I can eat something, then, then eat your meal. If after, you know, two little bites, you're still not feeling it, that's okay. Put it away and wait for your next meal or snack time. Okay. Um, here are a few mindful eating techniques uh, that are going to help you. Um, avoiding distractions. So don't, when, when you're distracted, you know, we tend to eat too fast. We take too big of a bite. We don't chew enough. Um, you might accidentally take a drink, you know, when, while you're eating and all of those things can have, um, you know, not so pleasant side of um, consequences. So avoid your distractions, turn off your TV, put your phone away, you know, wait until you're able to sit down at a table and, and eat uh, as much, you know, as much as possible. Uh, but slowing down, you know, kind of putting your fork or your spoon down in between each bite, taking a deep breath, um, just slowing down. Again, chewing everything thoroughly. It's going to help your digestion too. And stopping when you feel satisfied, not full. Um, this, this saying that's in this middle spoon here, hara hachibu, um, is an ancient Confucian teaching that means belly 80% full. So uh, that, that culture stops eating when they feel 80% full. And that is kind of something that you're aiming for. Okay, so your plan moving forward, you know, those are a few of the basic things um, that I know a lot of people like to know about ahead of time. Um, but the plan moving forward, eliminate all sugary drinks that might be left in your diet. Okay, really, really work on this thing. This is, this is big, this is gonna help you a lot um, to avoid those liquid sugar, you know, you don't wanna drink your sugar calories. So switch to water or any of those other sugar-free fluids. Focus on eating more protein and veggies at your meal um, and less starch and sugar. So eat plenty of protein and veggies, cut back on the starch and sugar. You can begin sampling a variety of protein supplements and include one a day. So either as a snack or a meal replacement. Follow up with all of your appointments so you stay on track and don't have to restart the program. Okay, so. Um, and then you're going to complete the Nutrition 101 quiz. So that'll be sent to you. And if you have any questions, again, my name is Meredith Houston Hill. I'm the dietitian here at the Prisma Health Weight Management Center. Thanks for listening. Bye, guys.